global symbol of peace and nonviolence whose words and actions inspire millions around the world. His Holiness the Dalai Lama reminds us of our shared humanity and the importance of compassion. He works tirelessly for global peace, religious harmony, protection of the blue planet, and to safeguard Tibet's culture and environment. In recent years, however, during His Holiness's visits to Western countries, noisy protesters were present alongside the usual large crowds of admirers. These demonstrations are being organized by mostly Western members of a UK-headquartered Buddhist group bearing many characteristics of a cult. They claim to be angry about the strong stance His Holiness the Dalai Lama has taken against the controversial and divisive practice known as Shogden or Tulgel propitiation. They allege that His Holiness has banned their practice, that they are being discriminated against by the Central Dependent Administration and expelled from monasteries. In response to these baseless allegations, the international Buddhist and Tibetan communities have repeatedly condemned the protests and expressed their support for His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Independent human rights organizations have dismissed the allegation. In 2015, a Reuters report exposed the fact that the Shugden movement receives clandestine support from the Chinese government as part of its global effort to smear the image of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The issue is considered by the Chinese government to be an important front in its struggle with the Dalai clique. The Tibetan Parliament in Exile is the highest legislative organ of the Central Tibetan Administration. It represents all the Tibetans and has unanimously passed four resolutions in 1996, 1997, 2008, and 2014, clearly recognizing the actions of Dojal followers as a political tool to create discord within the Tibetan community under the influence and deception of monetary gains, and to denigrate His Holiness the Dalai Lama with baseless allegations. The Parliament would like to make it clear that the issue has nothing to do with the religious freedom. The controversy surrounding this malevolent spirit originated during the time of the fifth Dalai Lama in the 17th century. Practice of Shugden propitiation was once spread among some quarters of Tibetan Buddhism, in particular the Gelugpa tradition. However, it has historically been associated with a rise of sectarianism and disharmony. Members of the New Kadampa tradition, NKT, which also uses the International Shugden Community, ISC, as a front, and Tibetan fringe groups of extremists continue to engage in this practice. The UK-based New Kadampa tradition is a neo-Buddhist organization headed by a Tibetan monk named Kelsang Gyatso. <laughs> The protesters also allege that they face discrimination within the Tibetan exile community living in India. More than 100,000 Tibetans have followed His Holiness the Dalai Lama into exile in India after the 1959 occupation of Tibet by China. These allegations made by Shukde practitioners are baseless, without any evidence. Their children go to Tibetan schools, uh, whatever medical facilities that they need, they are provided. Old people can stay and do stay in old homes and their pensions are also uh, provided. And for uh, Shukde practitioners to stay within the Tibetan settlement, we issue Green Book. Uh, they all have green books and their monasteries are in the Tibetan settlements. 
And anyone who wants to stay in India or travel within India, you need RC, Residency Certificate, which is issued by the Indian government with the endorsement of the Central Tibetan Administration. The fact that Shukdin practitioners are staying in India, traveling within India, clearly shows there are no discriminations. And most importantly, any Shukdin practitioner or Tibetan who wants to travel abroad, you have to have IC or popularly known as Yellow Book. And they all carry that and travel abroad without any discrimination whatsoever. Hence, any Tibetan who wants to join or are the staff member of Central Tibetan Administration are not facing any discrimination. And if they have any evidence of discrimination, let us know, we'll look into it. The protesters also allege that Tibetan monasteries in South India have expelled monks who worship Shogden. Well, if you're a Buddhist, then uh, you should take refuge to Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. And if you take a spirit as more important than Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, then you do not remain as a Buddhist, even if you pretend that you are Buddhist. And likewise, if you are a monk, then you must follow the uh, rules and regulations uh, that is prescribed by the Buddha 2,600 years back. And if you go against these rules and regulations, particularly the main rules and regulations like killing people or instigating others to kill people, then you lose your monkhood, even if you pretend that you are a monk. And if you are a member of a particular monastery, then again you have to follow the rules and regulations. But uh, unlike the rules and regulations of uh, the monkhood, the rules and regulations of the monastery can keep on changing uh, based on changing circumstances and situations like any other institution or organization. The monks in South India who did not accept their monastery's internal rules concerning the worship of Shogden were given land, access to infrastructure, and funds to establish their own monastery. Communities such as Shargenden and Surpam monasteries are free to engage in Shugden practice while remaining part of the Tibetan settlement in South India. Former members of the NKT report that it has the characteristics of a cult. In fact, Radical Shugden followers have resorted to violent criminal acts and are still sought by Interpol for the 1997 brutal triple murder of Venerable Lobseng Gyatso, the director of the Institute of Buddhist Dialects, who had spoken out against the practice, and two of his students. Venerable Lobseng Gyatso was stabbed 16 times. Former members have now formed a group called NKT Survivors and Supporters, and the reports are readily accessible on the internet. I was in the NKT for 12 years. Um, I, I joined it in around 1994 in Mexico. Um, various people in the group were doing things that were really, I thought, very unethical. So I talked about it with um, senior not, not very senior, but fairly senior people in the group. And then I was asked to leave. I was asked, I was evicted. Um, I lived at the center for quite a few years, seven, eight years. Um, and I was told to leave immediately. Because the emphasis within the tradition is very much on um, total control exercised by the top. And any, any, any criticism or, dis or dissent by anybody within the NKT is regarded as unacceptable and intolerable. We know what's going on. This has become an evil cult. And I don't know if you're alive or dead, Kel Sankyatso. I really, really appeal to you to stop these people from endangering themselves anymore with these dreadful protests, these dreadful negative thoughts, for them to have some peace of mind because it can only end in really sadness and tragedy for all parties concerned. Given that the allegations are completely baseless, it is clearly evident that the protesters are a fringe group of extremists and fundamentalists using Shugden and the religious rights rhetoric as a framing strategy to actually serve the parochial interest that is to undermine the global accomplishments of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And this ties in perfectly well into advancing the Chinese government's agenda of damaging the image of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, delegitimizing the Central Tibetan Administration and the Tibetan cause. 
A former regional executive member of the Shugden Society also confirmed Chinese funding and directives for their operations. According to a Reuters report, a leaked document belonging to the Chinese Communist Party indicates that the Chinese government is intervening on the Shugden issue. The document issued to party officials in 2014 said that the Shugden is an important front in our struggle with the Dalai clique. Buddhist organizations in the UK, Italy, Germany and Australia, to name a few, have issued similar public statements and reiterated their support and trust in His Holiness the Dalai Lama's views and guidance. The heads of the four Tibetan Buddhist schools and the Pun tradition have declared that they strongly condemn the false allegations and the continued smear campaign carried out by the Tulgel cult group against His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Unfortunately, the main outcome of the attacks on the Dalai Lama by the new Kadampa tradition, the international Shugden community and Tibetan fringe groups has been their self-alienation from the Tibetan people and the Tibetan Buddhist community. Their protests are an affront to the Tibetan people, as well as to the international Buddhist community who hold His Holiness in the highest esteem. <laughs> Nyanda 